Hello everyone and welcome to another FME tutorial. Today we're going to show you how to integrate Amazon Redshift with FME. We'll show you how easy it is to drag and drop your data sets into FME, transform it, and bring your data into Amazon's cloud data warehouse. Amazon Redshift is a fully managed data warehouse with automatic scaling and geo-replication capabilities, ideal for storing and analyzing petabytes of data with standard SQL. In this video, we'll be using two open data sets from the city of Vancouver. The first is a CSV listing of public street trees located throughout the city. The second is a shapefile that contains local area boundaries of over 20 neighborhoods in Vancouver. Once we transform these datasets in FME, we'll load them into Amazon Redshift and run a spatial query to determine the number of trees per local area. Now let's hop into FME and see how this is done. This tutorial is made by Gerhard Fischel. Step one, connect and transform. To read our source data, we simply drag and drop the dataset onto the canvas of FME Workbench and FME will automatically detect the data type. We can quickly preview the CSV file, add and read the feature types and inspect the data. We can see that there's close to 150,000 rows. We can also see that the column representing the location of the trees holds a GeoJSON object for every tree with LL84 lat long coordinates. Next, we'll transform and prepare the CSV dataset. You can use the geometry replacer to transform the GeoJSON object into FME's internal geometry format. Connect your CSV file to the geometry replacer port. Open the parameters and select Geome as the source and GeoJSON as the geometry encoding to transform the coordinates. At the same time, add the reprojector to set the coordinate system to LL84. This will allow us to visually preview this data. As you run the reprojector, you can see that there are over 22,000 features that weren't included as the Geome attribute was missing. This leaves us with over 123,000 points that we can now preview in this map. Feature caching will store our progress and we won't have to read this data again until we're ready to write it to Amazon Redshift. Next, we'll write our datasets into Amazon Redshift. But before we do that, drag and drop the local boundary shapefile onto our canvas. FME auto detects all geometry features in shapefiles, so we don't need to apply any further transformations in the next step. You can quickly inspect and preview the results in the map. Step two, write to Amazon Redshift. Now that we're ready to add the writer, type Redshift anywhere on the canvas to add the Amazon Redshift spatial writer. Under connection, add a new database connection and complete the required fields with your Amazon Redshift database credentials. For the purpose of this demo, we've already created one in advance. In the parameters window, you can see the name of the spatial column and the number of features per transaction. The coordinate system has been detected and you can select the automatic option for the table definition. This prompts the feature type window to appear and FME will automatically create the schema based on the new dataset that you connect it to. In this case, we'll create a new table called City Trees YVR. Connect the reprojector to your newly created feature type and click on the cogwheel icon to inspect the schema in user attributes. When attribute definition is switched to manual, we can also adjust the data types if needed. Now we'll add another feature type called Area Boundaries YVR and connect this to the local boundary shapefile reader feature type. Now we're ready to run the workbench by clicking the green play button in the toolbar. Once the translation is successful, we can run a spatial query on these datasets in Amazon Redshift. In addition to using the query editor in Amazon Redshift, all queries can be executed directly within FME with our SQL creator and SQL executor transformers. Step three, query your data in Amazon Redshift. When you refresh your data objects in Amazon Redshift, you can see that both datasets have been loaded. Your spatial query now contains the name of the local area boundary and count of trees in the city, and the geometry of boundaries contain the geometry of the trees. We can now run this query. The results are displayed according to the number of trees grouped per local area. And that's it for this tutorial. To give this a try for yourself, you can download a template of this workspace on the FME Hub. The link to the Hub is in the description box below. If you'd like to see another example, this time using FME to transform an Excel file that contains public art listings in Vancouver, visit our community, and the link to that will also be in the description box below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.